We have done this last time. Maybe this is an option, so you can s send us slides and we will we'll have translation of these slides on our screen, and you can comment on them. Yes, please. Have you sent it? Sorry, I'm a CEO right now at the hotel and it's kind of middling. Okay, I've got okay, your email. So we've got your file, a few moments we will open it. Can you say something? Can you say something? We lost you again. We lost you again. <laughs> We've got your slides. We've got your slides. But lost your voice. But lost your voice. Hello. 
better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if that happens again, you need a voice. I don't know how you're going to tell me. <laughs> we will switch from will your slides to, to camera if you will understand that uh, we will switch. Sorry, okay, I see my slides. <laughs> so can you point me to looking at slides? Uh, we will open them now. And then, yeah, if, if that happens, I'll, I'll just kill Or you, you can continue trying to share your screen. We, we need about a couple of minutes to... Can't hear you very clearly. So can you see your slides now? Camera is not available. Is that what I should be seeing? Can you see slides? Can you see your slides? Mm 
Раз, раз, раз. Раз, раз, раз. We're going to send a message, a text message, and then you can reply to this. Can you hear me clearly? I can't. No, I don't. I don't hear you. At first, it was very muffled, but now I hear nothing. So you can hear me well? I'm assuming you can hear me well, but if you could just say yes. Okay, great. I'm just going to start. Um, so, yeah, sorry for this uh, deep delay. I guess everything is deep to the face, learning to be packed and how deep delays. Um, so, this talk is about Parlay that looks like Parl AI, something like that, but we pronounce it Parlay, which we've ever seen like Pirates of the Caribbean or you know things about like pirates, they kind of stay in Parlay mean that they're going to have try and make an agreement instead of like fighting they get a talk so this is kind of a little bit of a joke play on this name uh, but it's also part to parler is like french affinity i guess for speaking and um and yeah, so this is where this name comes from. So this is a, a and that's why there's a parrot with that eye patch, by the way, the link to pirates. So this is a framework for a dialogue a research, a software platform, if you like, it's uh, Python. And it's for sharing, training, and evaluating dialogue agents on um, openly available dialogue data sets uh, with the aim of sharing between all the community, both tasks and uh, learning agents, and also, uh, you know, kind of whole pipelines, if you like. So the idea is to put them all in this uh, openly available resource on GitHub. And uh, there's some of my uh, co-authors that speak here who uh, worked on Parlay, Alex, Miller, Will, Hung, uh, Adam, Justin, who Antoine and Debbie, and there's uh, since then other collaborators added as well. So, you know, anyone who's kind of becoming a, a major collaborator, we're trying to add them also to the credits on, on GitHub. So, next slide, please. Aha, uh -huh, that means you're understanding me good. This next slide work. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so. What's the goal? What's the purpose of language? So, in like the NLP community, uh, you know, a, a lot of things are done. Like people analyze building paths, trees, and tagging sentences with language recognition and chunking and semantic role labeling. And look at many diverse tasks, which in some cases are more kind of analyzing, in you know, inherent, inherent or implicit aspects of language. But the actual purpose of language, like the end goal, I think of it for humans is to.
guess I'll just sit there and the one K works. When they run out, that's when I'll be okay. Okay, we can continue. I'm not quite sure where where we got cut off. So um, I'll just start this slide again. The, the purpose of the language somehow is to use it to accomplish communication goals. And, and you know, so there's a lot of things studied in NLP, uh, like you know, chunking and parsing and semantic role labeling tasks and things like this. But somehow, dialogue is the fundamental thing. You know, like two or multiple parties speaking to each other. So Pale wants to kind of focus on that and, and try and help push the community a bit to focus on that. And dialogue, though, is, you know, you can see it as a single task. So, which is just, you know, learning how to talk to each other. And, and then, you know, and then using that for accomplishing your communication goals. But you can see it sort of on the one hand as a single, you know, big task, or you can see it as thousands of related tasks that require different skills, which all come together using the same input and output format, which is, you know, speech or text, if you, you know, sort of turned it into text and got rid of the audio uh, to text conversion aspect. So, you know, for example, I can give, you know, thousands of examples of dialogue tasks. Here's a few, a task of booking a restaurant, a task of chatting about sports or news or some other topic, or answering factual or perceptually grounded questions. And we could go on and on. And we all know this, so basically lots and lots of these tasks. And we could just see them, you know, see it as this gigantic multitask uh, task, basically. Uh, but the key here is that they all use the same input and output format. And that's kind of different to in machine learning, the way people have looked at multitask learning across, um, say, you know, like, uh, for example, in image, uh, in the vision domain, because I'm at CVPR right now, you've got all these different tasks like uh, object detection, like segmentation, and so on, and they don't necessarily have the same output format, like segmentation has a completely different output format to object recognition, right? The same input is an image, but the same output format. And that already makes things difficult to put things in one framework. So dialogue, I think it's really nice that the input and output are just text. So this way, you can really make a simple API for like lots of different tasks, and try and tackle these all at once, with the hope that that pushes um, pushes research forward because people won't just focus on one of these tasks and build models that only cater for one of these tasks at one of these output formats, for example. You know, it's possible to build a learning agent that because of the, the, the same input and output format could potentially solve any of these tasks and can be evaluated on any of these tasks. And I think that's what could push us forward. So next slide, please. Yeah, so that's kind of uh, next. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. So, so that's kind of what, why it, uh, on the previous slide, why it's interesting for NLP people. So, from the machine learning perspective, all those different dialogue tasks require basically every um, every fundamental aspect of machine learning that we want to solve. Kind of can uh, is also inside those dialogue tasks. So that, you know, things that are uh, classic aspects of AI that we, we're looking to solve are things like task transfer, use of memory, use of reasoning, use of planning. All these things are in dialogue. So task transfer, you basically want to transfer between all these disparate dialogue tasks. So memory, you need to remember the conversation that's happened before logical and common sense reasoning to be able to, you know, work out what you should say next. Uh, question answering is one example of that, where you need to do reasoning. Planning, where you want to, you know, work out how you're going to uh, produce a, a dialogue discourse. Um, learning from interaction, so you can actually learn while you're speaking. Uh, for example, asking questions. 
uh, is a very natural thing in dialogue, and getting back those answers and learning from them is a fundamental thing that humans do. And then if I, uh, one more list here, compositionality, of course language is compositional, and uh, the reasoning that people do is also compositional. So I just think it's just a great area for machine learning, uh, because all these things are, in, are encapsulated in the problem, and uh, we just need basically the right, uh, the right framework and setup for us to really attack this. And one thing that's been missing, I think, is uh, which is you know fundamental is software tools that you unify all these different dialogue subtasks and agents that can learn from them, so that once we have that platform we can uh, kind of try and get our teeth more into these problems. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the point of Carlo. Um, next slide, please. So yeah, this is just a, a warning that basically, if you don't do that, and you just like pick one of these individual data sets, uh, a dialogue data sets, to work on that, could lead to some silo research where uh, you kind of, you know, you overfit to specific aspects of that data set, you know, you're getting the, the test error down on that data set and you can publish papers on that, but are you forgetting about the big picture, about looking for algorithms that can solve not just that one task but other tasks as well? And that's kind of worries me that people do that, uh, and I've seen that basically. I, during my career, uh, that basically that happens when, when you focus on one data set. And you know, you can look at, say, the whole history of, of NLP, and not just in dialogue, that happens too, right? You know, all the hundreds or maybe thousands of papers, right, on parsing, all those papers, and how much of that has sort of transferred to other problems, and maybe the answer's not so much, right? So maybe a, a more immediately looking at when you're developing these things, how that can help on other tasks is, is a good idea. And I just have some examples here as well on sort of more dialogue tasks. Uh, so web question, where it's a question answering task. Uh, there's, there's many models on that. Uh, but basically that data set specialised on using a knowledge base, so a structured knowledge base to answer questions, and so many of those things don't generalise to other question answering data sets, like SQUAD. For SQUAD, people develop completely different models, uh, um, where you know, now there's not a knowledge base, there's a Wikipedia paragraph, but that uh, also has its own special framework that um, in SQUAD, uh, the answer is given in the training set and also the evaluation set uh, as the start and end of context indices in the Wikipedia paragraph that, that contain the answer. And so people built their models based on that. And, uh, you know, like they have some stacks LSTM, I, I've also been co author of building one of these models uh, where, you know, the, the output is predicting start and end indices which immediately you can't apply to other tasks that don't have that start and you know, indice aspect of a data set. So, you know, if you were just generating text, for example, that, that would conform to this uh, more standard sort of API of having sort of text in, text out for dialogue. So the challenge is to make general model that so works on squad, it doesn't have this restriction, but works on other things as well. And again, another data set, Baby, that's one I worked on. Uh, when we first released it, we uh, built it also with this notion of supporting facts, so that the sentences in the uh, story, which are the ones that are relevant to answering the question. Again, if you build, make a model that makes use of that, again, it's not general and it's not going to work on something like squad or web questions. So these, these, are, these are the reasons why you want to put kind of all your dialogue tasks into one format, having them in one place, easy to access, and, um, and hopefully not overfit for that reason, because there's no excuse not to evaluate your model on other things. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, by, by the way, can you hear us? Um, so, yeah, so that leads me to Palo. So our goals are to make a unified framework 
for our evaluation and dialogue model. So as I said, we have this unified uh, data set format and then it's kind of unified way of evaluating things. And hopefully this aids reproducibility. So the end goal is general dialogue, as I said. So there's many different skills, uh, but you know we can encourage multitask model development and, and evaluation by making them all easily accessible. And out of the set of tasks we have there, there can be a seamless combination of simulated data sets, real data sets, supervised data sets, uh, sort of interactive reinforcement learning data sets. So the system is built to be able to have any of those kind of tasks, but to make it very simple, I mean, from your model point of view, you're just sending forth back and forth text. So we should be able to deal with these different kinds of tasks. Um, but, you know, in dialogue, the end goal isn't to just communicate with this coded data set, it's, it's to communicate with real people. So we've also spent a significant amount of time linking parlay to mechanical terms so that you can perform live dialogue. So it's easy to basically connect a Turker to your dialogue agent or to connect two Turkers together so that you can collect data uh, between two Turkers and then and then the way it's done, basically, an agent is either like a, a Turka or a, a, a machine learning model, or it's kind of one of these hard-coded data set teachers. And they're all kind of, you can switch any of them in and out. So that basically, that's seamless between, between switching between uh, you know, your model talking to a human or your model talking to one of these data sets, for example, or even two models talking together, which people have been kind of working on more recently, papers that do that. And uh, finally, we had to build a set of data sets that kind of helped with bootstrapping a working dialogue model um, for human interaction. And what I mean by that is that basically, if we can make um, learning models that can actually learn during conversation while they're conversing, we don't need a model that uh, knows and understands everything. We just need a model that when we put it online, uh, that it can get better when it talks to people. If we could get there, then maybe this thing could um, you know, continue to improve. But the problem is, if you've got a model that's so bad that when you put it online, no one wants to talk to it, and it's just you know, spitting out garbage, uh, no one's no one's going to try and push that forward. So you need to bootstrap to get to, to a certain level of uh, ability. And then for that, it seems that we need some, you know, some uh, data sets that get us to that minimal level. So maybe Parlay can be that collection of data sets that does that. that that's one of the goal. Um, but at the moment, we're, you know, we're more just collecting data sets that the community has released and putting them in one place, but we still kind of have that last goal in mind. And next slide, please. Um, yeah, so this is just to highlight a couple of work. So, you know, at Facebook AI Research, we've worked on this, you know, many different skill aspects. So here's a couple of papers. But I worked on the baby tasks and we did some uh, movie dialogue tasks, uh, and also some restaurant booking tasks uh, and things like that. So they can all go in there as different skills that we can evaluate. But it's not just about Facebook's uh, data sets, it's about everybody's data sets. So we're you know, trying to put all, all data sets we can get our hands on that are publicly available, accessible from Parlay. Next slide. Um, so this is just a, a screen cap of like the enter framework in Parlay. Uh, so you can see that, that in this case, uh, this is to collect uh, question answering data sets. So this is one of the demos that are given in Parlay. There's a QA collector where it basically gives uh, a paragraph. So this is kind of for collecting a data set much like Squad. And then it asks the human, uh, to provide a question given that context and the answer. So you can collect this question and answer pairs and then you could train on something like that. And we give other examples as well. Okay, next slide. Okay, um, yeah, and from the bootstrapping point of view, 
Um, this is a couple of highlight a couple of other papers that I've worked on, which I, I won't have time to talk about. But um, we, yeah, we we hope that we can again we can learn while conversing. So that would be an end goal. And a couple of things you need to do there as a learning agent is to understand when you get the textual feedback from someone like something like well done or no wrong the answer is something then you've got to learn from that right so uh, the first paper highlighted there shows how you can do that uh, and the key point there is to is forward prediction where you try and predict what the teacher is going to say next and learn from it and be updating your model and secondly you need a model that can learn to ask questions and then learn from replies that's a, a couple of papers i've been working on recently but um, i'm just Sort of listing them there. This talk is going to focus on Parlay. Okay, next slide, please. So, just a summary again of Parlay's properties. All data sets uh, look like natural dialogues, so there's a single API. The inside is they're both fixed supervised data sets and interactive online reinforcement learning tasks. It also supports other media, for example, uh, images for like visual question answering and other types of grounding. Uh, it's a repository of learning models as well as tasks so that you know we can share this code and you can run other people's models and build upon them. It uh, integrates with Mechanical Turk to link to humans so you can run collect data and evaluate and it's a Python framework. Um, next slide please. Um, so related software uh, so there's many existing independent dialogue data sets out there. I mean, I admit this to the squad, web questions, baby, and so on. And there's training codes for individual mo models that work on some of those data sets, but not others, also out there, you know, littered over GitHub. But all those things, the, the data sets and the learning models, are all framed in slightly different way, different formats, different types of supervision, and so on. And Parlay tries to attempt to unify this landscape so that we can find some commonalities and push things uh, towards a more um, unified setup. And some existing so software platforms that are related in their scope uh, but not necessarily a specialization, are OpenAI's efforts in uh, reinforcement learning, so that's Jim and Universe. So those things are more, uh, you know, Jim is more for games like Pong or Go, and Universe is for online games and websites. Neither focuses directly on dialogue or covers the case of supervised data sets as we do. But still, they're kind of uh, inspiring for us that they try to, you know, take their area and put them try and you know bring people together in a way and that's kind of what Parlay is trying to do too. The Com AI uh, also from FAIR is is another framework uh, that uses communication but but in that case is for the goal of developing sort of general artificial intelligence through incremental tasks testing increasingly complex skills. Uh, it works in a reinforcement le learning setting, so not a supervised learning setting like RLA can, and it contains only synthetic data sets rather than the sort of real language dialogue data sets as we do here, and it doesn't try to cover the case of all, you know, openly available data sets throughout the community, but my, my, right now has more built uh, a set of uh, synthetic data sets with the goal of trying to develop learning models that can that can solve them. So this is a different focus to Parlay uh, in Com AI. It emphasizes this evaluation of machine intelligence uh, and developing models rather than the more immediate task of, of real dialogue. Uh, next slide, please. So what agents are inside Parlay? So these are the ones in there right now. There's more in progress. Uh, Parlay is you know, continuing developing. Oh, I should say, if you want to look at the website, it's parl.ai is the URL, and you know, many of these things are there. Um, so, for example, you can get the you know the most up to date list of. Oh, I think you need to go back one slide. Yeah, sorry, this one. Yeah, what agents are inside Parlay? So. Uh, here is just the list of models that are currently there. 
There's a model called Dr. QA, which is an attentive LSTO model, which is from a recent paper, Chen et al., um, that gives competitive results on squad amongst other, data, other QA data sets. There's memory network code. There's a sort of classic seek for seek uh, model code. There's information retrieval baselines. And then there's these side kind of helper models at the bottom here, remote agent, which is a class for connecting any agent over ZNQ. There's local human, but you can swap out one of these machine learning models for a human, and then the keyboard input replaces the agent. So we can also use that to talk between two agents, one being machine learning model, one being local human. And then there's this helper agent called repeat label, which basically just takes uh, the supervised label and repeats it back to make a dialogue, uh, which is equal to debugging, and many more in progress. Okay, next slide. So that was the agents. But what tasks are inside, so I alluded to a few of these earlier. Um, there's basically a whole bunch of data sets, and this is still increasing. This was in the first the slide of the, like the first release a few months ago. There's question answering data sets, sentence completion data sets, goal oriented dialogue, where, for example, you're trying to complete a restaurant booking or something like this, and then chip chat dialogue, where this kind of the goal is harder to measure, but there's a lot of real chat, for example, chats from Reddit. So uh, many of these data sets are well known in the community, for example, Squad or QACNN, QA Daily Mail from DeepMind, Children's Book Test from FAIR, um, there's the Baby Tasks, uh, MC Test, Simple Question, WikiQA, Web Question, uh, a lot of these things. And then we had like one visual QA data set at the time. And then next slide is um, the current snapshot where you can see the ones in blue are like uh, new data sets we've added since first release, so which wasn't really that long ago, and we've already got a bunch more. We've got, uh, on the visual side, we've got VQA version 2, VDialog, and Clever. In QA, we have MS Marco, Trivia QA, and Nutrients QA now as well. And what's been exciting is some of those were added by people from the community, and uh, so that's only going to grow. And, uh, and try and cover all the cases. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, so next slide, please. Yeah, OK, yeah, so these slides are basically just showing what's in some of these tasks in case you didn't know. Uh, so these are the baby tasks. They're simple toy uh, little stories where there's question answering. Next slide. So Squad is a well-known QA data set from Stanford, uh, as Wikipedia paragraphs and question answer pairs. Next slide. Uh, this is uh, MS Marco that has like um, it's more like a kind of web search setup where you ask the question, you get back candidate passages, uh, and then you have to identify the answer within those. Uh, next slide, QA Daily Mail, uh, there's news articles and you have to fill in the missing X in a query uh, as shown there. So it's kind of more this like sentence completion task. So kind of further away from dialogue, but easy to collect data and evaluate. So we decided to include those as well. Uh, next slide, this is children's book test, also in that category. So these are like children's stories where, again, you have to fill in this word in the story. So to do this, you kind of really need to understand the semantics of the story. That's the hope. Next slide, uh, baby dialogue task. So here, this is a restaurant booking kind of task. Uh, next slide, uh, dialogue based language learning. This is uh, a, a data set where you have questions about movies, and then after the agent answers, so here the, there's the question, then there's the answer in red, and then there's a reply from the teacher uh, that gives you uh, textual feedback. So this is kind of different from normal question answering, where it just stops. There, but you get these answers like, yeah, that's when this came out, or um, 
that is incorrect. Remember, the question asks for a genre, not a name. So the task here is, is a little bit more like dialogue. So you get these kind of three turns instead of two turns, where you have to try and learn from that extra feedback. And we've developed some models that, that uh, do that, as I mentioned right at the beginning of the talk. Next slide. Uh, and this is another data set, maybe DD, where there's a short dialogue where uh, someone's saying they love a bunch of movies, but um, they're looking for you know another movie that's kind of about music. And then there's the answer, it's called a rock, it's a suggestion, and then the uh, first speaker wants to know what that's about. They, the second speaker tells them what it's about, and then the third speaker says, no, I like rock and roll movies more. Do you know anything else? And then they have to make another recommendation. So this kind of links a uh, dialogue with recommendation. So that could be a good idea because we know uh, how to evaluate recommendations very well, and there's a lot of models that do recommendation. But you know, dialogue's much harder. So you can know the data set. Seems like a nice idea. Uh, next slide. This is Ubuntu data set. Here, there's a dialogue between two humans about trying to fix various Ubuntu issues. Uh, next slide. And this is uh, the, all the, oh, it's a bunch of dialogues from the subreddit in Reddit about movies. So these are just the humans speaking, uh, discussing movies. Um, next slide. And finally, uh, Twitter conversations. Next slide. So yeah, that's a bunch of the data sets that are in here. So evaluation, the uh, aim is in parallel to support original evaluation metrics where possible. But we also try and provide a ranking evaluation on all data sets. So this is where we provide a set of candidates, uh, the, uh, the candidate answers to rank where possible, so that you don't have to do generation and you can test uh, your reasoning ability of your model only. Uh, and we think that's a good idea so that you can separate those two things, separate the reasoning ability of the model versus the text generation ability of the model. And it turns out that the also ranking is kind of easy to evaluate, and we wonder if that's not more correlated than some other metrics, the human judgments, although I haven't done these experiments yet, we plan to do those. Um, yeah, and then we have different eval mode setups, you can do single data set evaluation or multi-task evaluation. Um, next slide. So, actually, am I still supposed to end at 8.30? Mm -hmm. Message me that, or what? Or what's the plan? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, great. Uh, so, uh, you can continue because we have delayed, but if you need to go, we can finish now. Uh, okay. No, it's okay. I think, we, yeah, it's only going to be a little longer. Um, so, let's, let's, let's continue. Uh, so yeah, now more down to implementation details. So the way Popular is implemented, uh, we have these kind of core uh, concepts or classes. Uh, there's a world which defines the environment in any. So in the simplest case, we just have something called dialogue partner world, which just, just connect two agents to it and they speak to each other. And so that leads us to the other important concept of agent. So that's basically any speaker in the world. So it could be a learner, it could be multiple learners, so you can attach multiple agents to the world. One of these agents could be a human, as we said, like a local human, or it can be an MTurk agent, or it can be uh, a teacher. So that's the next concept, the third one there. A teacher is a type of agent that typically talks to a learner, and it implements one of the tasks listed before. For example, Squad or Twitter or Ubuntu or Reddit or so on. So that's a teacher, but it's still basically an agent. So it has the same API where it basically accepts, uh, you know, you speak acts and emit speak acts. There's just there's like a, a, a couple of special things it can do, like give you uh, supervision as well. So I'll, sh I'll show that very soon. And that's basically uh, all inside this last important concept, the action observation object, or we could just call that a message for short. So basically agents then message this action observation object to each other. And this 
object is kind of our standard API between agents. It's going to pass everything interesting between uh, agents, uh, but it's you know it's standardized. Basically, there's certain fields that you kind of have to use, and that's going to be basically used for text, though so, uh, for speaking, labels for supervision, and rewards if one agent sends a reward to another agent. And whether you're talking or listening, that's basically the same message structure that you see, just a sort of different view of it. The next slide, please. Um, so again, so there's some very simple code for displaying data. So the top part it, uh, is, it would be kind of like in your main, where you would like create a teacher. So well, here I've just shown like squad teacher, so that creates the teacher for the squad data set. Create an agent, uh, so opt here is some options. You create the world, so that takes in the options, and then you attach like the uh, two agents to it. So you turn an agent here. Yeah. And then you have some loop here for some number of examples where you call Harley. And uh, Harley, uh, that, uh, that's the sort of core thing the world does. Yeah, it's kind of on the slide. Uh, yeah, that's the core thing the world does that, that basically makes the agents talk to each other. And here I've also added a print world of display so that we can sort of print what's happening. And so this Parley or Parley, uh, depending on how you want to pronounce it, function is, is the second box. And that basically just loops through all the agents. And every agent has an act function. So that's where it basically speaks. And then for all the other agents, if they're not the same agent, they observe that action. So basically, one agent speaks, everyone else observes the speech act. And then you loop around, and everyone gets the turn to speak. So this act here that's passed in, see, that's both the action and it's the type of the object thing that's observed. So we're going to look what that thing is on the next slide. Uh, that's the ad, ad, observation action dictionary. So yeah, next slide please. So this is the thing that's passed between speakers uh, and it contains these standardized fields. So there's text, so that's the, something you're going to say, like hello, how are you? The ID, so you can have an ID of a speaker. You can send a reward, so this would be like a numerical reward for reinforcement learning. And a, a, a done, that signals that it's kind of the end of the conversation, the end of the episode. Um, and then there's a few special fields for supervised dialogue data sets, uh, like label, so that would be the thing that should be said next. So in a question answering data set, so the text field spoken by a teacher could be where was Obama born? And then the label field here would contain the answer, like Hawaii, where I am. And uh, then um, you would have like these other fields, label candidates and text candidates. So label candidates uh, is uh, for multiple choice problems. So you have the special thing that when there's say 10 possible answers, uh, then you can also send that to the agent and say these are the 10 possible answers of the multiple choice problem and uh, you know, tell me which one is correct. And uh, text candidates is uh, a ranking of possible candidate responses from an agent. So this is useful for basically doing ranking and type evaluations. But really it's the first field, the text field, that's absolutely the most important. Basically, all of these uh, fields are optional, um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's the one that kind of you have to include text, which is going to be the two agents speaking to each other. And then finally, there's other media such as dot image here, so that's where uh, for visual question answering the image is. Next slide, please. Um, so that on the left is just the same thing I just showed you, and that on the right, that's kind of like uh, a typical exchange. Uh, this is on the baby data set, where it shows uh, that uh, message being passed back and forth between the student and teacher, and some of the fields being filled in. Go to the next slide, please. That's just a, a zoom up of the right hand side of that slide. You can see the uh, yeah the teacher having the text fields. 
fermenting the kitty thing, Pat gave Sam the milk, Graham's the milk, and then there's the label, so that's like the right answer in the kitchen. And so label candidates is this multiple choice options. And episode down, uh, in the case the episode isn't done yet, Yes, but can you see your slides? No, but that's okay, is that? Okay. Uh, slide, uh, which should say figure four. Oh, I got them now. Yeah, there we go. So here's just an running like a little piece of color code. So Python example slash display data minus T that specifies the task. Uh, baby. Uh, so that then basically starts printing out those fields in a sort of uh, the agent speaking to each other. So here it uses a repeat label agent like this dumb agent that res responds with the label. By default, so you can just see the task. So you can see the teacher uh, speaking and saying a question and offering candidates, and then the repeat label agent answering back with an answer, and so on. And so you can. Once you read it, and you're going to see those data sets. There's nothing more to do. And it's, that's real simple. Uh, can you still hear me? Because I lost the slides again. Um, I mean, if you can see the slide, maybe you just click through them real quick. Okay, let, 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 let's do this. So now we on the figure four, example output to display okay. data. Okay, let's go to the next slide. That just the next slide shows a bunch of the yes. ways that, you know, easy one you can run display data with multitasking, like you just put minus baby on a squad, you can eval a model or train a model very easily. Next slide uh, just shows a demonstrative experiment of training on squad and baby at the same time. See that one? Yes. Demonstrative. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, and then next slide. So basically that was just to show that it's very easy to set up these experiments in Parlay, but it also shows the limitation of current methods because, as I was saying, squad models typically predict a, a start and end indices, so they cannot be applied to many dialogue data sets. So actually they can only be applied to some of the baby tasks, so that's why in that last slide it only, not all 20 baby tasks were shown, only the ones where that made sense. Because, for example, if the answer to a question is yes or no, and that doesn't appear in the context, you, know, you need to generate that word yes or no. You can't just find uh, that phrase in, in the context. Um, so, next slide. Basically, Parley, that's what the Parley lays out this challenge to the community. Find learning algorithms that are generally applicable and that benefit from training over many dialogue data sets. And that leads me to the conclusion slide. So, you can just leave it on the conclusion slide. And I can take questions. Yes, here is. we have a conclusion slide. Okay, great. So that's, yeah, that's that. Okay, okay. 
Questions, please. Questions. вопросы про парлайк кто-нибудь задаст? Как вы используете? Um, yes, I, I mean, I'm not part of the com. Uh, to, well, that's probably Mikhail, who can answer that much better than me, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so I think that uh, with, uh, uh, with the Python language, actually, we have already implemented a whole uh, class for the code. Александр, can you say some words, some words about So any other questions? So I have, uh, one, more question. one more question for you. What is your vision? What is the what is, what is, what is, what is next stage for the pipeline? So after you have uh, all the data sets, uh, provide uh, the integration. So, what do you think the next important step that you should provide for researchers to implement these universal models which can learn many tasks and transfer knowledge between them? Can you hear me, Jason? Can you hear me, Jason? No. No. Oh, I don't hear anything. Can you still hear me? Can you hear me, Jason? Can you hear me, Jason? Stage. What is the role of the, 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 the
now we are saying, now we are saying that, uh, that uh, you have integrated, you have integrated uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, data, sources data sources in the in pipeline. The pipeline. And the goal to and have goal a universal, universal algorithm that can, that can learn as, as much as much tasks as possible. As po but uh, but yes. uh, what is what is your idea about your the next idea step? About the next what step? can what, what can you provide you for research to solve this problem? This problem, this problem of this problem universal learning. Do you have any idea, do you have any idea, or, idea or, do or do you think that uh, you, you think will, will as a next as stage collect as, as, as much possible, possible models from other people as possible, as possible in your in your repository or what? Or what? Yes, uh, yeah, a few things. I mean, first is, you know, I spent quite a bit of time uh, on, on software development on this, you know, sort of which took away time from research of new algorithms. So I kind of, you know, one goal of this as well as using it for the community is personally, you know, for our group is to use it as a test bed for pushing forward our research. But now when we push forward our, our research, you know, like, coming up with new models, we've got new and we think better ways to evaluate them. So certainly one sort of low hanging fruit goal is getting models that at least train on everything and evaluate it on everything and see where we are. I think some of the models we have uh, that have been you know, recently published just haven't even really been fully evaluated yet. And so getting them you know, so actually we plan to get a leaderboard online uh, uh, showing like evaluation across all the data sets uh, and, and uh, we want to do that in two ways. So one is kind of evaluation on a single task and then the other is evaluation sort of multitask where you have the ability to train over all of them. And we didn't kind of want to put that out until we had models that have actually been, you know, trained and evaluated in all of them. So that's one sort of goal, is just take existing models and do that. And then, of course, next goal is develop models that improve over those numbers, right? And, uh, yeah, so from, so some of that is just taking existing models, like attentive LSTMs and memory networks and things like that. And then, hopefully, that exposes weaknesses that we can then, you know, address. And from the... Uh, other point of view, yes, there's some models out there that we haven't even got in Parlay yet, we also want to do that. So there's, for example, there's a bunch of models from uh, the McGill group, like Julian Serban and Ryan Lowe kind of stuff, where they have like hierarchical LSTM stuff, so we're actually uh, speaking to them and, and uh, in the process of getting those in. And um, you know, we also want to encourage the community to put those in without us doing it as well. We've had already some some good positive um, you know results there for community putting in some tasks, and we've had a couple of people talk about putting in models, and hopefully you're going to see that soon. And uh, but we also you know as well as the models being there, we need that kind of leaderboard thing. To, to see their performance across all the data sets and um, yeah, uh, and then push that forward. Uh, so that's, that's, that's one kind of obvious thing, but like I said right at the beginning, my overarching goal is actually to try and look for learning while conversing. And I see sort of Parlay as maybe some sort of base for like bootstrapping the model that could be good at doing that. And there's still many aspects of research missing to do that. For example, you know, learning from feedback, learning to ask questions. We've done very limited research in those areas. We need to push that forward. And, and then of course, uh, even if you get there, you need a platform where some, you know, where you have the, the chat box online talking to people so that they can do that. So uh, that's kind of my overall goal, and I'm, I'm hoping Parlay is kind of helps uh, to do that because it will help push the uh, the research and models forward, and it's a place to kind of collect all the data sets to train those models to bootstrap them. So that's that's my plan. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, Jason. Okay, thank you, Jason. And sorry for all the sorry for all this for this time. And let's say let's thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Jason. Thank you. And have a good time. Have a good time in Hawaii. Yeah. Right. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you.